Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo and what I'm going to cover in this short um, recording is how to output a file to a .csv file and .csv stands for comma separated variable um, and uh, this is something that we can use with Excel. So previously I showed you how to output to a text file. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to output to a CSV file this time. I'm going to start with the problem that I finished with the, in the last recording, the text file, and I'm just going to modify it. So I'm going to come up with a different name. And I'll call it .csv. Now you might be wondering, will this open in, in things other than Excel? And I expect it will if you have other... Um, if you have other uh, kind of um, uh, Excel type ones like from Open Office and so on, uh, Excel type programs, it'll probably open in those, but I haven't tried it, so uh, give it a go yourself and see if they if they do open it. But the point is that uh, if we put commas between variables, uh, they should go into adjacent cells, and if we put uh, new lines between variables, they should uh, go on to uh, new rows. In other words, move down the way or, or uh, populate a column. So uh, what I've done is I've called it Excel type.csv. Again, I could have given it any name I wanted. And um, I've used W to write to it. Now, what I'm going to do um, with this particular one is I'm going to uh, print a few different things just to show you the different ways in which we can do these. Um, so I'm going to use the standard printf as I have here. And I'm going to put out... Um, Um, I'll do a slash n now, right? So six, seven, eight, nine should go into uh, adjacent um, cells, so along uh, along one row, along the top row. But when I put in a new line there in the middle, I will now drop down to the next um, row down. So we'll put uh, ten, uh, okay. And we'll close that off there at that. And uh, so we'll run that first, just to show you that first part of it. Uh, again, I've left in all the things like closing it and uh, zeroing the pointer and all that from the last time. And uh, what I'll do is I'll once again open up the uh, that directory. And you can see some of the, the files from last time, but now I've got one called Excel type just pop over here you can't quite see it um, so you can see the type of icon that has come up here it looks very like an Excel um, file but uh, not quite not quite the same as an Excel file because it isn't quite the same but if I double click it here it'll open up an Excel and uh, the version of Excel that I have here normally comes up in an activation error so I don't know whether it'll, yeah there it is so don't worry about that it shouldn't occur to you um, now what we can see is we've got six, seven, eight, nine have gone on one line. Then we've popped down to the next line: ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, uh, and that has been written like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, an array up the top, just to show you that uh, we can have other types of this. So an integer array with five values in it. And I'm going to write some values into it. And I'm deliberately going for, you'll notice down here I've gone 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, I'm deliberately going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, print those afterwards so that you see that there's nothing special about the order that we put things in. So I'm going to do a, a for loop for i sign 0. Try and get used to saying that i assigned zero rather than i equal to zero, um, because it's uh, it is assigned uh, rather than equals. It's it's not the same as the mathematical equals. Okay, uh, now I haven't created a, an an integer for i, so I'm going to do that here. And uh, I'm going to do an f print f. Uh, FP again. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on, um, or I'm going to put these as uh, percent %d for integers, but 
uh, and I'm going to put commas between them. Okay. And um, and then I'm going to put in the array uh, here with the i. Now, what you may expect to happen is that the, these would go on to a line of their own. But the thing is that I haven't put another slash in here at this point, at the end of this, which means that something unusual is going to happen here. Okay, so I want you to think about just before I run it, uh, and if you want to pause the video yourself so that you have a think about it, I want you to try and predict what's going to come out uh, in the t in the CSV file from what I've written here. So no harm to give the video a bit of a pause and have a think about it uh, before you see what happens. It won't be quite what you expect to happen. And I'll open the file. Activation error uh, comes up. Now, what you notice here is that originally I had, I had 6, 7, 8, 9 across the top. Then we pop down to the next time with 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I wanted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I said that they would come out on the same line because there was no slash n there. The thing is, there was no comma there either. Okay. If we pop back to here, you'll notice there was no comma after the 13 here, which meant the next number, which was the number 1, printed out by the array. Okay. The very first element in it got printed right onto the end of the 13 and before the next comma actually occurred. So as regards the file as it's actually opened, that's uh, that's what will actually go into it. And I'll just see here if I can open this as a text file. So I'll open it with notepad. And you can see the way that it's gone in. No comma has gone in between 13 and 1. And so as far as the Excel sheet is concerned, um, that is 131. And in case you think that that's text, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here equals 131 um, multiplied by 2. And you can see there's 262. So it does take it as a complete number built up in that way. Okay. So that's one to be wary of with regard to these CSV files and how they come out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a comma there first of all, just to show you how that works. I've left the file open because I'm determined to see this error occur. Ah, it, it, it certainly happens for these type of files, okay, and perhaps not for text files. So it says that file couldn't be open for some reason. So you've seen that error didn't occur last time, um, despite the fact that I expected it to, but it certainly does happen for these type of files. And uh, the reason that it couldn't be opened is because the file is already open and I can't modify it. So I'll run it again. <coughs> And now we can see that the one, two, three, four, five have gone into separate um, separate cells. Okay, and if I want them to go down onto the next line, uh, all I do is instead of the comma here, I put in a slash in, and uh, that will deal with that. Again, the file couldn't be open for some reason, and you'll find yourself doing this as well. You'll um, you'll keep uh, running the program while it's uh, while the file is still open. Okay, and we can see that. And one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the one, two, three, four, five all on separate rows. And I do that by instead of commas here, I'm going to put slash in so that each time it runs a share, they each go on separate rows. Okay, and we can see the one, two, three, four, five have all gone down there in separate rows. So uh, I'm going to leave that uh, that video at that, and um, I'll be moving on to a further video where we're going to output uh, something to that file that's a little bit more interesting. Uh, so I'll do that in the next recording.